Four producers, one sample. Space edition. It's the exact exact same thing. Hey, it's Andrew Huang, and this is the show where four producers are gonna start from the same audio material and each create their own original tracks. I've got an awesome lineup of guests today. We're gonna be hearing from Laura Escudé, RiQ, and Flux Pavilion. And I also have an extra special fourth guest for today because the sample this time was provided by Jamie Liddell, which is amazing. I've been a huge fan of his for years. Uh, I was on his podcast a little bit ago. You should check that out, but uh, let's hear what he gave us to work with. I cannot hold you anymore So I might next to close the door So just a little snippet of an unreleased track of his. Let's see what everyone did with it. I'm Laura Escudé. I'm a future classical artist, violinist, producer, and Ableton certified trainer. Thank you so much, Andrew, for inviting me to do this. This is one of my favorite shows on the internet. When I first got the sample and I heard it, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's voice is so beautiful. One of the first things that I thought of was to try this plugin called Paul Stretch. I have no idea why this just popped into my mind. I mapped some of the parameters on here, like the harmonics, harmonics bandwidth, as well as the stretch amount. I used my MIDI fighter to tweak these amounts over time. And I just kind of went through and picked apart the Paul Stretch 13 minute long clip that I recorded. And then from there, I re-resampled <laughs> all of this stuff into another track and started moving around the loop, making the loop longer. And after I was done with that, I had a bunch more audio resampled of the resample. And then I started to fit that into my song. I created a melodic version of the vocals here. So I also recorded a bunch of my own vocals in the session and treated each one different ways, did different kinds of panning and added effects. I recorded using three violins. The first one is my five string realist acoustic violin and I use that for all the regular violin and viola parts. I also played my five string glasser violin. This one is a baritone violin so it has octave down strings and it sounds like a cello. As well I used my 3D printed 3D various violin. It's also a five string and I use this to play the synthesizers in the track. <laughs> For some of the vocals in the track, the sample, I used my Wii controller to mess around with some of the parameters in Tornado. I also used my Bukla Thunder by Sensel to control my future classical sample pack that we created together. It's a free download on their site. One of my favorite synthesizers in my studio is the Moog Subsequent 37, so I decided to use that in the drop of my song. Oh, I'm liking this one already. Really kind of thick layer of strings. Super huge atmosphere right off the bat, cool. Oh, man. Really kind of cinematic soundscape. Nice smooth. I love this piano. Yeah, I like the cinematic vibe. It's cool. It's dreamy. I love that there's this acoustic feeling that's mutated. Oh, the voice wasn't originally there. It's real nice. 
Wobbla. You know I love a wobble. Sick backing vocals. Bringing in these layers, but the mix is still super clean. A lot of layers, a lot of details here. Really good. Ooh, I appreciate that. I really do. Such great atmosphere and so much movement to all the sounds. Oh. Yeah, I really like the way it takes the vocal into a whole new context, especially with the layered harmonies earlier. Oh, you're killing me. This is so good. So am I next to close the door? Yeah, there it is. That was great. Yeah. Hey, that was fantastic. Absolutely crushed it. That's one of my favorite things I've heard from you, Laura. So good. My name is Rico. I make music with those equipment under the name ReQ. Thanks, Andrew, for having me. Mr. Liddell, you're a legend. I decided before I got the sample that I want to make the whole track only by using that sample as source for all of the sounds. Let's have a look what I've done. The first thing I did was I imported the sample into Isotopes RX, separated the vocals from the violin and the guitar. Oh, Then I imported those into this little box here, which is the Tasty Chip GR1 granular synth. I then took this output and fed it through the modular. Modules I used were Cloud, a bit of Pico DSB and Scooper as well. I just basically did a half an hour session feeding everything through everything and then recording it into Ableton and then chopping and selecting the good bits from there. So for the bass I loaded the vocals into Native Instruments form, which is a granular sampler. I started laying down the beats with the bass drum. I'm using a pitch envelope and a filter envelope to make it kind of kick and then I'm really smacking it with a compressor. And it's the same thing with the rest of the drums. Jamie's voice transformed into all of this. Then there's one layer of random bleeps and bloops from the modular recording. And one simpler that plays random chops of the vocal. And another simpler which plays an ARP that's forced to a scale and order tune. And all of these elements combined create the main beat. Straight in. <laughs> Here we go. Sick sound design already. Nice grains. The panning is amazing. Sample. Mm. So deep. This is how I was feeling last night. Ooh. So vibey. Yeah, grainy. Nice, nice grain work. No, it's just coming. You know. You know this is ramping. The sounds are razor sharp. Okay, I don't know what's coming next. I'm saying flutes. Flutes! Ah. <laughs> oh! This is the re I'm used to. There's always a flute in my mind. I can always hear the flute. You can dance to this. The laser percussion. So wet. Those drums. 
nice. Everything cinematic though, everyone's brought out such an emotion in this song. It's ridiculously tight. It's so squelchy, but precise as well. Okay, I could definitely listen to this on repeat too. This groove is just so funky. Piano. I love how it keeps evolving. I'm bouncing. I'm bouncing. <laughs> how is it possible to have this many laser beam sounds and for the mix to still be so clean? So tight. Okay. Break it down a little bit. That little ARP is amazing. I'm like an ARP connoisseur and yeah, that's a good one. Wow. That is a mood. That is a serious mood. Oh, beautiful detailed work. My God, you guys are good. Very cool. Very cool indeed. All right, how's it going? I am Flux Pavilion, and it is an honor to be part of the Four Producers One Sample thing that Andrew does. I'm a massive fan. Super cool. The sample is from Jamie Liddell who I'm also a massive fan of. With sample manipulation not really being a core of what I do, it got me thinking about what is the core of what I do, and I think composition is probably where I spend most of my time, finding a sequence or a new melody that really sets the remix into a, like puts it into a new space. And this is the chord sequence I ended up with. I cannot hold you Once I've got my chord sequence, I tend to then layer an extreme amount. The sounds are never normally that great, but collectively with lots of other things, you can start to really build up a massive palette. I wanted to do a, a traditional Flux Pavilion type song. My fundamental sound in the stack is a sawtooth from Massive, which I've been using since I was about 16 years old. I recorded my guitar, which is this guy, which I just built recently, it's called Alphonse, and that's a treat. And yeah, I recorded some guitar and my bass, and I've got a, a electric drum kit too. Built a nice bed underneath the vocal and did a little bit of singing too. guys with your moods oh got another atmospheric one digging the guitar I cannot hold you in oh. oh my god oh heck yeah it's not what I was expecting but I just dropped right into a movie so cinematic I was definitely not expecting this that Porter's head vibe, love it. There it is. My heart just 
like I feel the intensity, you know? <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I loved that. Nice little tempo change. Nice placement of the vocal in the stereo field. All this guitar. Oof. Heck yeah. Wow, that was super moody. And I'm just, oh. Blown away. Crushed it. That definitely had soul in it. So sick. Ah, this is such a good series. So I started my track by cutting up the sample and making this kind of lo-fi thing. And then uh, I decided I didn't like any of that and I started again. This time throwing the sample into Simpler to do my chops. Pitch envelope on that. And I thought I could go in kind of a funky direction with that, so I added some drums. And a couple of those are made from the sample. I've got this shaker sound, which is the X from when Jamie sings next. It's a little snare topper here. And that's from... It's the K from Jamie singing Clothes, saturated quite a bit. I also did that thing where you loop a tiny piece of the sample so it turns into a pitch and then you can play it as a synth and you know, you can do that with any sound, but uh, just thought, why not? We're already here messing with this sample. So once I got to this stage, I had a vision where I wanted to turn the track into this kind of choppy, glitchy thing where the sample would still be really recognizable, but just in really small pieces and kind of twisted around in different ways. So uh, I started just resampling it while running it through a bunch of effects and tweaking a lot of parameters. And uh, the thing that I actually used the most here was stutter edit. This thing is like a ton of different effects and modulation that you can adjust and then turn on and off with MIDI notes. So here's an example of some of the stuff that came out of stutter edit from just running the sample through it while I was tweaking everything like crazy. Pretty wild stuff, and most of it actually wasn't even usable for this track. It was just a bit too extreme for what I wanted to do, but I found the parts that I liked and kind of arranged them into the B section for my track. <laughs> So there's a lot of stuff that's constantly changing and glitching out here and a bunch of fills that only happen one time throughout the whole track, but I kept the musical coherence here by having a recurring motif. So I took that, how can I hold? Put that at the start of every two bar phrase, as well as other little repeated details for your ear to catch on to, like our synth from earlier, which is doing this now. And then of course there's a bass line giving everything a foundation and the bass throughout this whole track is just sublab. But the bulk of creating this track was really just taking those weird little chops of affected bits of the sample and sprinkling them everywhere. Warp this one into a little riser. Here's one of the guitar chords from the sample turned into a riser. This is the sample run through some guitar pedals and then outputs thermal, and I'm doing some automation on the volume as well as thermal's dry wet to create another riser. So many risers in this track. And then there were a few other non-sampled things I added in, some breaths. I played the tiniest bit of guitar. Three layers of extra shakers. Some extra little synth details from Phase Plant. And then actually right near the end of producing this track, I realized that a couple sections needed a stronger melodic element. So I just downloaded a vocal off splice and chopped it up and... This song has never felt like this.
Knuckle Chops. See that dynamics, Andrew, you know. You know. It's still grooving, you keep that bubbling, man. You're gonna have to always be loud. Smooth. Okay. I wanna be in the club. Right, so I like how all the edits feel natural. What? Oh! Completely different use of the vocal than the rest of the tracks. It's got a really organic feel to it, even though it's really kind of edited. I like it. It's like when I come back around, man. <laughs> As usual. Great work. I mean, a lot of small details, playful melodies, excellent groove. Yeah, I like how the editing, it wasn't an imposition to the groove, which I think is really important. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Such incredible takes on this song. All right, team. Thanks so much for watching. As usual, all the artists and tracks are linked in the description. And if you're interested in trying out this kind of music making, download my sampler app. It's called Flip. It's only 10 bucks US. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Check it out. It's linked in the description as well. I'll see you next time. Flutes!